Hi guys, in today's video we're going to talk about Danish military drumming and one specific aspect of it called the trow or the drow from the early 1800s or potentially even the 1700s. And this is, would be the same for Danish Norwegian drumming because that was the same country for a while and potentially the same as just straight Norwegian drumming because I don't know a whole lot about their military drumming. I know a little bit about their folk drumming but that's a slightly different thing. So this is actually a re-upload and an update of the original video which came out a few weeks ago. And I've actually learned some new information because I talked to Bjorn Christensen, who is the guy who wrote the book, which, you know, I found the original instance of the trow in that we're talking about. So um, I will let this video sort of run through mostly the same way that it was, go through all the evidence, and then I'm going to add that new evidence in at the end and give a better conclusion, I think. There's a note head in a rudiment in the 1820s that's like a single note, it has two stems on it, one up and one down at this time. Stem direction indicated sticking, so it kind of looks like, at first glance, that it's one note that you play with both hands. And this is interesting because in Austria at this time, uh, a single note head with a stem up and a stem down could mean a flam or it could mean a double stop, depending on what source you look at. Um, but at some point, Austrian drumming moves to showing a flam with a grace note, like we normally would, and this same you know, same note had two stems thing evolved into a definite double stop at some point. So um, it could kind of go either way at this point in history, but there's precedent there for this type of notation meaning a double stop. So the original trow or drow was in a publication by Johann Linkus from 1820 or so. We don't really know. It's not dated. It's a handwritten manuscript that has, like I've been describing, the single note head with the two stems. And it just says trow. And that's it, no description given other than that. So I should mention at this point that uh, there is another spelling for this trow with a D called a drow. And later I talk about it in this video, but right here I just kind of jump from trow to drow. And I actually don't think they're the same thing. So this whole thing I'm about to say about the drip slog is probably not relevant. But I'm going to say it anyway because it's part of the investigation. Now I haven't really seen this anywhere in music or in rudiment lists or anything um, until uh, 1937 it pops back up, which is over 100 years later and things may have changed. But Victor Crone has an article where he talks about the drow being the same as the drip slog but he admits that people at his time and place don't really know what those things are. He couldn't find a definitive source, but he believes, he says, that the drow is the same as the drip slog, and he notates it as a note hit with a legato mark on the top. Um, but he doesn't describe how to play it. He just says that those two things, the drow and the drip slag, should be related. So of course I went to try to find what the drip slag is, because that could potentially clarify this for me. So I found a few references to it, um, in 1843, Hans Fisker, in a, basically a dictionary from French to Danish, called it a single stroke of the drum useful in cannon exercises. So we're talking about a single hit. He doesn't mention sticking, so it could be a one-handed hit or a two-handed hit, but it's just one noise. Um, Peter Andreas Clausen in 1875 says the same thing, one hit of the drum, in his Norwegian to English dictionary. Um, and in 1921, there is a dictionary of the Danish language that calls it two short beats of the drum, which usually begins a piece of music. So now we have sources saying one hit and two hits, which is a little confusing. So the next source of information I got was Bjorn Christensen has a book, which I own. It's this book here. And he says that the trow in, specifically in Linkus, he's like referencing the first publication we talked about, um, he spells it drow, even though it's clearly trow in the original, and he says it's basically a trace logs rough, which means a three-stroke rough. So now we've heard one, two, and three notes, depending on when and who you ask. So one of the pieces that this is prominently used in, in the original 1820-ish manuscript, is the general march. And the general march is the same in Denmark and in Britain and in America. It's a very common signal throughout the rudimental world. And the general march has, in American and British, at the end of each phrase, there are flams. Well, in the Linkus version, there are these trow or drow at that same spot. Well, and there's a group in Denmark, they're like modern reenactors, like presently, 
They're called the Flodstrands Tambourer of 1717, and so they're playing historical military drumming. And those guys have on their website the General March as part of their repertoire. And their General March has the same rhythm as all the other General Marches. And in those places where you would expect to see a flam in the British or American version and uh, this trow or drow in the 1820 Danish-Norwegian version, they have a note with a legato line on the top of it. So that sort of shows that they think that the drip slag and the drow are the same thing, I think. And, but they show sticking, and their sticking is the same as ours, it's just letters. And their letters for right and left are H and V, but it's the same thing. And they have an H slash V over that note with the legato mark, the drip slag or the drow. So that shows you that somehow, whatever they're doing for that, has two hands involved. Which is kind of like the original, which had the two stems, and remember stems meant sticking back then. And um, so there were two stems for two sticking, and these have two letters for two sticking. And so you could think maybe it's some kind of a flam or something, right? Um, but there, it doesn't show that it's a rough or a drag, so we don't really know if it's some type of flam or some type of double stop or some type of charge stroke or even a rough. It's just not shown. Um, but I think that if it was a rough, they would have shown three letters. Who knows, though? Uh, now, they do have flams in the same piece, and the flams are, have the sticking of just H and V together, no slash. And, of course, the flams have a grace note, so we know that they're different. So the sticking is different and the notation is different, so it's not a regular flam. That's really what I can tell you from that. But it does have the same notation as the drip slag, uh, which has been conflated with the drow. So, of course, I'm still confused after this, so I went and I talked to somebody. Um, Nicholas Vestman Jensen, who was a Royal Danish Navy drummer and is still a rudimental drummer today, and he said about this whole thing that I believe the terms trow or drow would come from Belgian or Flemish or Dutch and be related to drags in a more specified way. I do believe drags are notated with two or three grace notes. So he's going and agreeing with Christensen that it's a three note um, or even four note like rough or drag figure. Okay, so in the original video, at this point, I just kind of left it open. I didn't know what a trow or a draw or a drip slog actually was, and that was the end of it. But now, of course, the re-upload, I have an answer to some of those questions. First thing, the trow, the draw, and the drip slog, not necessarily all the same thing. I don't think that that's true. The draw, I think, is a drag. Christensen was right about the draw with a D being a drag, because draw is an older form of draw, which in Norwegian means drag. In Danish, there's a similar word that means drag. Um, in Dutch, to Nicholas Jensen's credit, there is a similar word, drek, which means dredge or drag. And he may be right that the term came from Dutch, I don't know. But all these things are the same as the American and British drag, and so thus I think you know, a double and a single, a drag, is what that rudiment is. This is not the same as the trow, because the spelling matters, actually. Uh, when you talk about the trow having two, you know, stems, looking like an Austrian doppelschlag, that, I think, is super indicative that it is an Austrian doppelschlag, because of two things. One, Christensen didn't know about the double stems when he published his original manuscript. Weird, I know, but he was looking at a hard copy of the notation where it was really hard to see the downward stem when the publisher digitized and then printed his uh, pages from the original to the book reproduction. They probably photoshopped it and they, they changed the colors or the contrast or something and the downward stem popped out really obviously. So he actually hadn't seen the downward stem, and as soon as he saw it, he said, yeah, that's a double stop. So he changed his mind from what's in the book, and he agrees with me that a trow is a double stop, which agrees with the Austrians, which there's also actually um, an overruff and an underruff in Danish drumming, which directly correspond to the Ganza ruff and the Halba ruff from Austrian drumming. And so if you have a whole bunch of Austrian features in Danish drumming, having one more isn't a stretch, right? So. Um, I think that is the answer, that a trow is a double stop. So there we go, we've solved it. Now, there's one other thing we have to talk about, and that's what the heck is a drip slog, and that I can't exactly tell you. I have a feeling it's like a charge stroke, but the definitions do seem to change over time, which is odd. I do not think it's the same thing as a drow. Victor Crone was confused. 
because if it was a drag, it would have three notes and none of the definitions or the way that Crone notated it have three notes. So it just doesn't, doesn't make any sense. But aside from that, I think we got this wrapped up. A drow with a D is a drag, a trow with a T is a double stop, and a drip slog is probably something else. So uh, thanks for bearing with me. I think we've got it now mostly, and that'll do it for today. Thanks.